Hayden Weeks, Warren Sharp, John Daigle here to talk about the divisional round and all four games that are occurring, two on Saturday, two on Sunday this week. And let's just start it with the first game on Saturday. Rams traveling to the number one seed in the NFC, the Packers. And Hayden, let's kick it off with you here because you believe that the Rams were actually going to be run heavy in this game, continuing a trend they showed just last week in their surprising wildcard win. Well, if you just look at last week, I don't think that Sean McVay trusts Jared Goff. He had Jared Goff active, but not be the starter. And if Jared Goff was truly injured, I think that they would have made him inactive, brought up Bortles. So I do think there's an element of McVay not fully trusting Jared Goff right now. And we have to remember the broken thumb. He also already has small hands. He's going to Green Bay and he's he's a kid from Southern California. I can say the same. I don't want to be playing football in Green Bay in this situation. So... I'm guessing that the the Rams are going to try to run the ball early, especially because it kind of matches up with the way the Packers play defense. They're 18th in rushing EPA, and they're 19th in neutral pass rate allowed, which means offenses, when they're playing the Packers, they're choosing to run the ball more so than pass the ball in neutral situations. So I think this is going to be kind of Cam Akers' game in the first half. We'll see what the Packers can do on offense. Even if you combine John Wolford's six attempts to Goff's 19 last week, that's the fewest pass attempts the Rams have had in any game all season long. So in running the ball at the heaviest and happiest rate in the wildcard round, we saw what their offense wanted to do. And then they just leaned on Aaron Donald and the rest of the defense to get it done the rest of the day. Warren, what else did you see? Is this a game that perhaps the Rams lean on defense again? Or is Aaron Rodgers in this passing attack just an entirely different one than what the Rams saw last week with Russ and the Seahawks? Well, it's one that the coach has a lot more confidence in, that's for sure. We know uh, the Seahawks just fired Brian Schottenheimer. They didn't like the level of passing or the efficiency that they were getting out of that passing attack. Um, I think, obviously, Matt LaFleur has a ton more confidence in Aaron Rodgers in this passing attack here. The interesting part about it is really how does this game kick off because the Packers have the NFL's number one scoring offense in first halves of games. They've got a great game script. They generally get out very quickly in games. That could, if they're having success, pull the Rams away from what I think you guys are correct in suggesting that they're going to want to try to run the football here. They were, they were doing that, even though that was the strength of Seattle's defense, the run defense, the Rams were still running the ball at a pretty high rate. So you would expect them to try to do that in this game as well. But if the Packers are getting out pretty quickly, uh, that's going to really take them out of that. On the flip side, the Rams have the number two scoring defense in the second half. Brandon Staley, their defense coordinator, stud defense coordinator, is getting head coaching interviews right now. He has a great halftime adjustment. He's typically able to get on teams. It's going to be critical to see, can he bring those adjustments and push them into the first half? Can he start this game with a really good game plan to derail the Green Bay Packers offense a little bit, give his team, his own offense, the chance to hang in here with the run game. I think the the opening 10 minutes of this game are going to be fascinating to see how Staley's defense does against Aaron Rodgers and can they keep clamps on the number one first half scoring offense. I'm curious to get your thoughts on the Packers offense as well, Hayden, because Although it didn't seem this way, Russ actually, to Hayden's point, averaged 13 yards per attempt on early downs in the first half last week. Pete Carroll has this odd tendency where he just, almost like a golf swing, I'll say, where the ball goes right, and so everyone corrects it by trying to correct their swing path, but really just the club face starts right, and you're swinging too far left, and the ball jolts right. Pete Carroll sees too high safety and thinks, oh, logically Russ can't be successful against that defense, but just in attacking that defense, and actually being tremendously successful, uh, he still pulled the reins back and tried to run heavy. And that's ultimately what cost the Seahawks offense and the team as a whole in that game. So how do you feel about the Packers offense in this matchup? Well, I think we have more faith in Aaron Rodgers and this this coaching staff to kind of figure out these things. What the Rams defense wants to do, and they've talked about this at length, they want to protect the deep pass, most importantly. That's why they have two two safeties on the field a lot of the times. That's why they have fewer men in the box than any other team in the league. How you beat that is you can't, it's not going to be with Marquez Valdez-Scantling winning downfield. Devontae Adams has to win one-on-one matchups against Jalen Ramsey, which Jalen Ramsey has been balling out. Look at his stats against Metcalf and DeAndre Hopkins. This is going to be a Robert Tanyan game. This is going to be an Alan Lazard game. Maybe they're going to get some some screens to uh, Aaron Jones as well. You kind of have to like take the yards you're, you're, get, you're given and you have to be able to block up front. So I think the matchup here clearly is Devontae Adams versus Jalen Ramsey. Um, whoever wins that, I think is going to have the ultimate 
deciding factor. To me, I like the under a little bit at 45 and a half. And if I was going to pick a side, it would be the Packers. I just don't trust the Rams offense right now. Do you have a lean? Of course, you don't have to give us, Warren, what you perhaps have already given subscribers to your tremendously successful package this year. But do you have a lean on an under, perhaps a first half start? Um, is that what you were suggesting earlier when you were talking about the first half offense here? I do think that this game has the potential to start off a little bit slower. I know there are several betting groups that are interested. Some have already dabbled. Others are still conducting some research, so to speak, uh, and looking at the under in this game. So that's definitely the side. I personally have not yet done anything in terms of betting the total on this game. I initially looked at some value with the Rams, just thinking that their defense could try to put the clamps on this Packers offense. I do agree we had a another segment on the show with Drew, and Drew discussed the teaser element for the Green Bay Packers. Even though you're not crossing the seven, bringing them down to just have to win this game is an attractive leg. I think Hayden mentioned it, but Jared Goff has not played in weather like this, but once in his career, it was a game in Chicago. I believe they only scored six points. He did not have a very good performance. So although I think the weather is still supposed to be fairly good by Green Bay standards, it's significantly different than what Jared Goff is accustomed to dealing with. And we still don't yet know how banged up that thumb is. And I actually saw, uh, I have no idea why they snuck him on a fourth and one late in that game uh, with the finger issue when they were up by 10 points, I believe, but they did sneak. And I saw some Seattle players grabbing at his injured hand. You never know when Jared Goff might bang up his hand. We don't know the status yet, if Walford's going to be able to go in this one too. So there are a lot of question marks still yet to be answered in this game. Drew Densick on point as usual and trying to bring it down from seven to just a straight pick them for the Packers. Uh, admittedly, you can get it at six and a half at some books. So if you want to tease the six and a half, depending on the juice you're getting, I'm waiting to see if it comes down to six to do just a straight six point teaser. But that, of course, will probably have to wait another 24, 48 hours. Another big game, though, on Saturday is the one I'm most interested in, and that is the Ravens at the Bills. And that is because we know what the Ravens are going to do. Although Lamar has been efficient and passing the ball, they still are a run heavy and run first team and Hayden you to your point the Bills actually invite exactly what the Ravens want to do on offense yeah I'm looking at neutral pass rate against or allowed and that's the Bills are 29th which means like I said earlier teams on offense are choosing to run the ball against the Bills in neutral situations they play a lot of two high coverages and they haven't just been good at defending the run. They're 22nd in run defense EPA. I'm looking at their edge rushers. I'm looking at their linebackers for the Bills. I don't see enough speed between those two groups to kind of combat this, these Lamar Jackson runs, these J.K. Dobbins runs, um, even these Gus Edwards runs. So I think out of this entire game, I'm most confident in the Ravens being able to run the ball. And even if they do have to pass the ball a little bit, I still have faith in Lamar just making some plays he's just he's playing with more confidence the offense looks way better than it did earlier in the season so i want to be buying on the ravens whenever i can is there anything we learned from the bills performance last week warren that makes us perhaps worried about their defense in particular running into a buzzsaw a ravens offense that's now averaged 6.3 yards per play at least in the last six games since lamar jackson returned to the COVID list because let's be honest the colts were the better team the colts outplayed the bills on Saturday and having 470 yards of offense, committing zero turnovers and committing 53% or converting 53% of their third downs. The issue is that their play calling inside the red zone was just very poor. And so that's why I'm somewhat worried about the Bills defense in this matchup. Yeah, the Bills defense, first of all, they're very bad against the run. They're very bad against explosive rushing. Uh, one prop that I like last week was Jonathan Taylor's longest rushing attempt over. Um, that was able to hit. I feel the same way about J.K. Dobbins this week. You know, the Bills give up explosive gains on the ground. And when you're having to mentally and physically account for Lamar Jackson, it will create lanes for J.K. Dobbins against an already susceptible defense. So I think that there's the potential for at least one bigger 20-plus yard run from J.K. Dobbins here. Uh, you're right from the overall flow of that game it was shocking to me that the Indianapolis Colts came away with just 10 points and four drives inside the 20 yard line uh in that game against the Buffalo Bills last week but the other thing to note in that game that I don't know is getting enough discussion is the Buffalo Bills average starting field position in the first half of that game on average they snapped the ball per snap at their own 40 yard line the Indianapolis Colts on average snapped the ball in the first half 
at the Buffalo Bills 40 yard line. I mean, they were on average the same spot because the Buffalo Bills had every single drive of that first half start inside their own 15 yard line, multiple drives, I think three of which started inside their own 10 yard line. So it was very difficult. I mean, from a play calling perspective, it's very difficult. I would like play callers to just kind of call their best stuff, but it is difficult backed up there. You have to make some adjustments. They still had two drives from that bad field position, go the length of the field and score touchdowns against the Indianapolis Colts. Um, so that's one consideration is, is the average starting field position when we're looking at last week's Bills Colts game. But in this game, to me, I think the biggest element here, and, and Hayden is absolutely right with regard to the rushing defense of the Buffalo Bills being their biggest concern on that side of the ball. On the other side of the ball, my biggest concern with the Baltimore Ravens defense is the rate that they blitz. They're the number one most blitz heavy defense in the NFL. Josh Allen has done pretty well against the blitz but has terrible splits against pressure. So there's a big difference when you look at the numbers blitz rate against the blitz versus pressure rate. Against pressure, he's terrible. So there's got to be two considerations for Buffalo in this game. Number one consideration, we've got to keep pressure off of Josh Allen. There's a few ways to do that very easily. The first is which is just what formations and personnel groupings is Baltimore better at blitzing from and getting better pressure on the quarterback. If Buffalo sticks with 11 personnel or 10 personnel, and specifically in 11, use zero to one step drops to get the ball out quickly, Baltimore struggles to get pressure there. They also could use a little bit more 12 personnel than we've seen before. Baltimore doesn't get a lot of pressure against 12, and they're very susceptible to tight end passes. So that could be a win-win. But the biggest issue here is making Lamar Jackson a passer of the football. And the only way that you can do that when you have a bad run defense is on the scoreboard and that is get a lead early in this game and it's got to be a very high priority for buffalo to come out and make sure that they're up quickly aggressive early so that they can make lamar jackson pass the football more than run it in the second half i would also keep an eye out if you're listening to this midweek on devin singletary's prop once it comes up at points bet because tj yeldon will be active in place of zach moss but as we know he's more of a satellite back i expect devin singletary uh and no matter how much they use the running backs, which typically isn't a lot in Buffalo, to still handle 15 plus touches and the lion's share of touches. And reminder, you can actually get a leg up and see when those props land by getting our Edge Plus Max sub to unlock access to our exclusive Edge Finder, top trends, game predictions, prop projections, and much more at motorworld.com slash edge. And be wise, use the promo code PLAYOFF10 for 10% off your subscription for the rest of the season and use it going into basketball season. There you have it. You heard it here from the guys. Good luck this weekend, whatever you're doing. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.